A shifty Chinese officer aboard a stranded ship seems to be a martial arts master and kicked a random attacker's ass. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Did you know the name of this channel has an accidental historical link to one of the first people to bring martial arts to Okinawa? Today's story is about the origins of one of the most popular kata, namely Kushanku. And my sources are a mix of an article on Jesse Enkan's website karatebyjesse.com, the works of Mr. Simon Keegan, Andreas Quast's website Rukyu Buge, and some extra tips and guidelines provided by Mr. Quast and Hanshi Patrick McCarthy. As usual, I've made these quite different sources my own, so feel free to comment when you think I've misunderstood anything. The best known origin story of the kata, in short, is as follows. Kushanku was said to be a Chinese master who passed his skills on to the likes of Sakugawa Tode and Chatanyara in the 1750s, providing the roots for kata like the kankus, uh, the kushankus, but also the pinans or heians. Today, I'll take the time to go a little deeper into who actually was this person by talking about an incident called the Oshima Hiki, or what happened at Oshima. The year was 1762, when an Okinawan ship on its way to Japan was blown off course by a typhoon and stranded on Oshima Beach on the island of Shikoku. On this island, there lived a scholar by the name of Tobe Yoshihiro, who wrote down everything concerning the ship and its crew and one of its more peculiar passengers, the Chinese military officer referred to as Kusanku. Tobe talked to the Rukuan officer Shiohira and asked him about the Ryukyu kingdom and about China in great detail. He noted everything down meticulously from bureaucratic information to more bucolic chit-chat. From the writings of Tobe, it seemed Mr. Kushanku was an expert in Chinese unarmed combat. This became apparent when uh, the following incident is described. A larger man attacked the smaller Chinese man with one hand upon his lapel and the other applying his kumai jutsu, he overcame the attacker by scissoring his legs. This is the first historical mention of unarmed fighting traditions in or around Okinawa. There is an issue though, because no man by the name Kusanku, Kushanku, Gosanku or whatever is ever mentioned in Beijing or Fuzhou, which would suggest that the man's real name wasn't Kusanku, and he might not be on an official mission to Japan at all. Concerning the source, the Oshima Hiki, the writings of Tobe, were never translated to modern Japanese, let alone to English. But Andreas Quast has taken the time to write down the essential information in a few articles on his website. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Now, as said before, there exists an accidental link between the name of this channel, also the name of my dojo, Kani Uchi, and the incident at Oshima. You see, the technique our mysterious Chinese officer used, the leg scissors, is also known as Kani Basan. Now, the guys who founded our dojo back in 1980 were great fans of this, these types of techniques. When the time came to choose a name for their dojo, they thought Kani Basami meant flying scissors. They also thought Uchi like Uraken Uchi, meant punch or attack in Japanese. In a beautiful yet misguided attempt to combine the technique they loved with making it fit with the logo of Wadaryu, you know, the fist within the wings of a dove, they named their dojo Flying Attack and translated it into Kani Uchi. Although this name would be better translated as House of the Crab, the name stuck. 
Nobody bothered to verify if the name really meant what they said it meant. And back then they didn't have the resources to verify it anyway. When we took over the dojo in 2008, almost three decades later, we decided to keep it. Because crabs are awesome. The crustacean, not the other kind. The link between this story and the one about Oshima and Kusanku goes deeper than the obvious flying scissors technique. You see, when you learn about the Oshima Hiki and start reading about it, you find a real treasure trove of important information about Okinawa, the Ryukyu Kingdom and its relationship with China. So it seems tragic that this historical document was never officially translated to modern Japanese. However, the importance of the document is subordinate to the general interest in the subject. The same is true for the origins of Kaniuchi. When the story of Kusanku, the Chinese master, is told, it goes like this. Kusanku teaches Sakugawa and Chatanyara his style of martial arts. They make it their own and create a kata which they name Kusanku to honor their master. A beautiful story that teaches us to respect our masters, yet has little to no historical evidence. The real story? A shifty Chinese officer aboard a stranded ship seems to be a martial arts master and kicked a random attacker's ass. Just doesn't have that romantic ring to it. This is often the case. Many legends have gone through similar transformations to create versions that can teach us something that never actually happened in real life. Next week, we'll take a look at what happened in Okinawa when the Japanese decided to reform under Emperor Meiji. So, how about you guys? Do you know of stories from your life or surroundings that are strange or can teach us something? Where does the name of your dojo come from? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That's it for now. Let me wish you a great day and as always, thanks for watching.